down the main reactor will be destroyed for sure. This is madness. That's pretty good, see, because what we want is that freight train, we want it to look like a freight train coming down on us, it wants to have a real sense of impending doom, so if you can really bring the thing down towards us, and just skip right over this edge, that'll work good because what you can do it in the interior is you can do the hard back cross and then you know, get some flares so that we occult the flare in the original shot, and then when we come to this one, we can come out of that flare into the ship itself, which would be a real nice transition. Okay, that was good. In 1975, Al Miller and myself were trying to come up with new ways to improve miniature photography. What we came up with is a way of controlling the camera and the subject relative to one another, basically recording the moves that each of those pieces make. And this became what we commonly refer to as motion control. Now, what this allows you to do when you're doing miniature photography is to lay down separate elements of film with different subject matter on them that are all matched together with the same move. And as a result, can be combined in optical and give us an image that looks like it was all photographed at one time. For this kind of a shot, we use a process that's called blue screen photography. Blue screen photography is the ability to shoot on one piece of film a foreground subject against blue and then combine that with a separate subject shot on a separate piece of film uh, in a normal environment. We're frequently asked to create environments that don't exist in the real world, such as space or the interior of a burning building or a city that's set in the future. An important facet of creating those environments is models in miniatures. <laughs> Animation is used to create complete original characters or to enhance the target be made in other environments. Special effects visuals are usually comprised of several separate elements of film. Our optical department combines these separate elements into one piece of film, which is known as an optical composite. Our dedication to unique film images requires constant research and development. I think it's going to be great. There's a lot of smoke hanging around on the sides, which I didn't really care for, but the stuff that did go up did exactly what we wanted to. I'm on the leader. When we did Star Wars 10 or 12 years ago, the idea was put all of the shops and, and talent that makes the miniatures and props and paintings and machines under one roof so that when you needed something you could do it right now. 
Unlike other shops where they are just given a part of a job and given a drawing to just build something, we go into the production meetings and look at the storyboards. And with the experience that we've had, we decide or help you decide whether or not some shots are effect shots or they should be live shots or uh, whether they should be miniature or full-size sets or whether or not a creature could be made or a robot or something like that with the amount of money you have with good production value. All the people that work here have been working together for a very long time and have solved a lot of these problems in one way or another before. They're all very knowledgeable about how the pieces of film get put together. So there's no uh, guesswork in that we don't guess and then it costs you a lot more money to find out that we were wrong. We either spring it back forward or we stiffen these hinges up so it creaks when we open it goes there's a little chatter. Looks good. I can promise you that I can do this job on time and on budget because I have the people with me for so long and I have all the shop facilities around me to do it. If I didn't have that, I couldn't say that to you. The end product of this to us is that we've again done a good job, made you happy, made ourselves happy, got the reward of having done the job, and also the fun of having done the job. Our company is people. It's the people who make the equipment and the people who use those tools to create the images that we produce. When Paul Woods opened his animation studio, he pictured he'd just need a secretary and some phones. Hello? But as his company grew, the phone system just couldn't keep up. My line cocked out! It's for you, dog! Did somebody get that? So the characters insisted he'd call New Jersey Bell for Bell Atlantic Centrex service. It had the latest phone features, was maintenance-free, and when they branched out, Centrex flew with them. So if you have trouble communicating, draw on New Jersey Bell, a Bell Atlantic company, where more than just talk.